Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Elena, maybe we can take a break after the work week, go to a cafe, do some shopping, asked the cheerful, full-figured woman to her colleague who was leaving the entrance of the furniture factory. I would love to, but I can't, Elena replied. Ah, always burdened with your own troubles. You've got quite the cross to bear, darling. I'm not complaining. Who else but me? Well, Daniela, here comes my tram. Elena Gasset, the accountant of the furniture factory, ran to the tram stop. Getting on the tram, she couldn't find an empty seat and stood on the back platform of the creaking wagon. The phrase of her caring colleague kept echoing in Elena's mind, burdened with your own troubles. It was about her 75-year-old mother-in-law. Elena became a widow a year ago, and the burden of caring for her husband's mother fell on her. Her mother-in-law, Sonora Viktorovna, had a tough character. She had worked in managerial positions all her life and was used to controlling everything and everyone. But a few years ago, her health started to deteriorate. It became difficult for her to walk, and she experienced a minor stroke. Her son's death further weakened Sonora Delgado. She could move around the apartment, but going outside to the store without assistance was nearly impossible for her. Moreover, there were occasions at home when she couldn't stand on her feet and would fall on the way to the kitchen. Therefore, Elena always tried not to stay late at work and hurried home. She couldn't say that she did it with enthusiasm. Sonora Delgado's tough nature, control freak tendencies, and sharp tongue caused Elena a lot of inconvenience. The elderly woman always knew better where to put things, where Elena needed to go, and what time she should be home. Elena felt trapped in a tower with a dragon, unsure when she would be able to break free. There were days when Elena just didn't want to return to her mother-in-law. She struggled to keep inside her irritation and anger, not to lash out at the frail woman. But Elena understood that there was no one left for Sonora Delgado except her, and taking care of her was the best way to honor her late husband's memory. On this day, Elena was not particularly cheerful either. She knew that she would have to give the routine report of the day and listen to orders from Sonora Delgado. Upon arriving home, Elena opened the front door, entered the hallway, and heard her mother-in-law talking to someone on the phone. Yes, you won't believe how everything has worked out. Sonora Delgado exclaimed enthusiastically. She could speak in such a tone only with her longtime friend, Sonora Fuentes. Elena decided not to enter the room and waited for the conversation to end. Elisa, now I'll successfully sell the apartment, live my last days with dignity, and free my daughter-in-law from her responsibilities. Yes, I signed the contract today. I have all the documents in my hands. At this point, Elena anxiously sat up and listened even more attentively. What? What do you mean by shady realtors? You don't understand anything. I'm telling you, everything is legal. No need to come visit me. Stay at home. Sonora Delgado raised her voice louder and louder. They sometimes argued with her friend, but Elena had never heard her mother-in-law speak in such a tone. Sonora Fuentes could also insert strong word. She worked in the legal office of the same company that Sonora Delgado headed. Sonora Fuentes was currently on a well-deserved rest, but still kept up with legal news, always warning her friend about new shady schemes. Elena heard her mother-in-law hang up the phone and entered the room. Good evening, Sonora Delgado, Elena greeted quietly. Hello. Come here, the mother-in-law sat in her favorite armchair and handed Elena some papers. Read this. What is this? Elena asked in confusion. This is our happiness. Elena took the papers in her hands. One of them had the words donation contract written on it. Elena trembled and continued reading, I, Matilda Delgado Longoria, of sound mind and clear memory, donate the apartment that belongs to me by right of ownership to the organization. Elena couldn't read further. Wide-eyed, she looked at her mother-in-law and asked, What are you doing? Are you surprised too? Sit down, I'll explain everything. Today, a young man and a lady came to see me. 
they represented some social organization that helps the elderly and provides care for them. In short, they offered me a deal. I sell them the apartment, and they arrange for me to live in a retirement home where I will receive round-the-clock care. You understand, Elena, I'm not getting any younger, and soon you won't be able to take care of me completely. This way, you can peacefully go and live your own life. I don't understand anything. What's so hard to understand? I sold it a bit cheaper than its market value. In return, they will provide me a place in the retirement home, a private room, a personal nurse, and a view of the forest. Isn't it like a fairy tale? But why does it say donation contract here? Because it's faster this way. The purchase transaction, or whatever it's called, takes a long time to process, with a lot of paperwork involved, but here it's just one signature, and that's it. But don't worry, I've taken care of everything. Look, I have a receipt from them, in which they promised to pay me 250000 Sonora Delgado handed another paper to her daughter-in-law. Elena looked at it, it was a handwritten receipt. You know, Elena began hesitantly, I'm not a lawyer, but I think in such cases, receipts like this are not issued. You think you know so much. The mother-in-law raised her voice again, this time at Elena. Did you want to get this apartment for yourself? Well, don't worry, those 250000 will still be yours anyway. Why would I need your money? What are you saying? Elena started to explain herself away. I'm worried that you might be deceived. Everything is legal. Which organization were those people from? Young old age, I think. Elena took out her phone and quickly searched for the name of that organization. The first link she clicked on started with the word scammers. She scrolled through dozens of reviews, and each one told stories about schemes to deceive elderly people. Sonora Delgado, these are scammers. Is that what your internet says? The mother-in-law didn't want to listen to her daughter-in-law. They just write all sorts of garbage there. Look, here they indicated their address. If you want, go check it out yourself. Elena took the paper with the address, got dressed, and quickly left the apartment. The office of that organization was located in the city center, and Elena had to take the tram again. She was very anxious, not because of the apartment. Elena had a place to live. She still had the apartment where they lived together with her husband. The children had grown up and moved to Moscow, so the apartment was empty, and if anything happened, Elena could always return to it. She was scared about something else. Sonora Delgado might not be able to handle such a situation. Losing the apartment would be a real strike for her, and that was not even the worst case scenario. Who knew what these people would want to do with Sonora Delgado to avoid taking care of her in the retirement home? Elena didn't want to think about that. Yes, the mother-in-law was not the easiest person, and the daughter-in-law had suffered a lot because of her, but she was still a family. Despite everything, Elena treated her well, simply understanding that everyone has a different character. Moreover, when Elena and her husband were just starting their relationship, Sonora Delgado had helped them a lot. That empty apartment was purchased with her involvement, so Elena firmly decided to get to the bottom of the situation. After reaching the designated address, the woman saw a small business center. Entering it, she asked the security for the office number and went up to the third floor. It was a shabby building of some factory hastily converted into office spaces. Reaching the right door, Elena knocked and entered. The working day is already over, said the woman sitting at the desk in the office with a nasty voice. She was already gathering various papers into her bag and clearly preparing to leave. The sign on the door says you work until 7 p.m. It's 6.55 now, Elena sternly replied. Fine. What do you want? Your company deceived an elderly woman today, my mother-in-law. Senorita, we don't deceive anyone. Everything is legal. No, don't try to fool me. Your employees presented themselves as a social organization. That's exactly what we are, a social organization, the woman interrupted Elena for the second time. A social organization that deceives elderly people? I read reviews about you. 
I demand that you immediately terminate all the contracts. Calm down, young lady, calm down. We conclude all contracts in accordance with the requirements of the law, so nobody here will terminate anything for you. Then I will file a police report against you. Go ahead, write it. You're not the first, so to speak. First, people don't take care of their elderly relatives, and then they come here to complain. You don't even try to hide it. What are we not hiding? That people like you want to quickly get rid of their elderly relatives? How dare you? Elena couldn't believe her ears. The woman was openly explaining their scheme without any shame. What? How dare I? We're doing you a favor. What do you think? We don't have any retirement homes, and we just decided to take away your naive relative's apartment. No, we actually send the elderly to places where they will be taken care of even better than you. It's just that they have to pay for it with a whole apartment. Well, what did you expect? It's business. It's the times we live in. See you in court, Elena said harshly and walked out of the office. She couldn't believe what was happening to her. Scammers were sitting in the city center and not even hiding their dark intentions. What good would it do her if they actually sent Sonora Delgado to a retirement home? She wouldn't live there for long anyway, knowing that she had been deceived. No, she had to find a way to expose these people no matter what, and Elena headed to the police station. She had never filed any reports or been involved in legal proceedings before, but now she was prepared for anything, so strong was her anger towards these individuals. The police station was located not far from the office center. Elena reached it on foot in just 10 minutes. Stepping inside, she saw a sign that read duty part. Elena approached the box beneath the sign. Hello. I would like to file a report, she said. Take the form and write, the officer at the duty part replied mechanically, handing her the form. He was sitting on the phone and didn't even look at who was standing in front of him. Elena spent a long time writing the report, carefully choosing her words. She wanted the police to investigate everything as quickly as possible. After filling in all the fields on the form, Elena handed the report to the officer on duty. He finally looked away from the screen and began reading the report. Okay, full name, address, phone number. All right, the officer's eyes quickly scanned the lines on the form. Oh, young old age? Yes, do you already know something about this organization? We know, we know. We already have three reports about them lying around for a month. And how are they being investigated? Well, they're not really going anywhere. We've already checked this company. Everything seems clean. So you're trying to do something in vain. It's a dead end case. What do you mean by dead end? Are you refusing to accept my report? Oh no, senorita, we're not allowed to refuse to accept it. We'll just file it away, and you'll have to wait. Elena walked out of the police station feeling dejected. She didn't know what to do next. She didn't want to go back home again, but for different reasons this time. Elena didn't know how to explain to her mother-in-law that they had indeed been deceived and that there was no chance of restoring justice. She simply couldn't bring herself to say those words. Arriving home, Elena slowly climbed up to the right floor and entered the apartment. Normally, Sonora Delgado would have the TV blaring loudly, but this time there was silence in the room. Well, Sonora Delgado asked quietly. We'll figure it out, Elena whispered. So, it was a scam after all? Sonora Delgado was usually stubborn, but in the end, she could be persuaded. This was one of those cases. It seems so. Stupid old fool. Sonora Delgado covered her face with her hands. Oh, come on, Sonora Delgado, Elena rushed to her mother-in-law. We're not alone in this. Several reports have been filed against this company, so they'll definitely sort it out. Of course, Elena kept the words of the police officer at the duty park hidden from her mother-in-law. She didn't know what to do next, but it was important to protect Sonora Delgado for now, so Elena had to come up with some reassuring words. They fooled us like children, Sonora Delgado lamented. And I was even happy about it. 
I told you we'll sort it out. Did they mention any specific time frame? Yes. They said we would have to pack our things and move to the retirement home in two weeks. That means we still have plenty of time. Just two weeks, Elena thought to herself. I have to come up with something. Worst case scenario, I'll lie and say I received the money from them. The next morning, Elena was woken up by a phone call. Usually, she would wake up early even on weekends, but last night she had trouble falling asleep, so she slept in until 10 a.m. Elena glanced at her phone and saw an unknown number. She got scared. For some reason, she suddenly had a feeling that it was those same scammers calling. Elena hesitated for a moment whether to answer or not, and ultimately decided to pick up. Elena Gasset asked a stern voice from the phone. Yes, who's calling? My name is Montero. I'm an investigator. I've reviewed your report. Could you come to the department today? I can. What time should I come? Right now if you can. Just bring all the documents, the contract, and the receipt. Elena quickly got ready, made lunch for her mother-in-law, and hurried to the department. She felt a sense of hope. At least her statement had been taken into consideration and not just tossed into a folder and forgotten. She didn't tell her mother-in-law that she was going to the police. She simply said she had some errands to run. Elena wanted Sonora Delgado to think as little as possible about the situation, although she knew it was impossible. Moreover, they would most likely have to leave in just 11 days. Elena entered the familiar building of the police station and approached the officer on duty. There was a different officer sitting there this time, who informed her which office she needed to go to. Elena walked down the long corridor almost to the end and saw a sign that read Senior Investigator, Captain Montero. She knocked on the partially open door. Hello. May I come in? I'm Elena Gasset. You called me today. Good day. Come in, have a seat. Elena recognized the stern baritone of the investigator. He was a tall man in his 40s with gray hair at the temples. He was actively typing on the computer. Elena sat down nervously across from him, and after about 20 seconds, Captain Montero shifted his attention from the computer to her. I apologize, there's so much paperwork to fill out. The investigator started searching for something on his desk. Ah, uh, here it is. I've reviewed your statement. I must say, the situation is not new and quite sad. This scheme has been known in neighboring cities for a long time. These scoundrels settled here three months ago. The officer on duty told me that there are already three statements. Yes, that's correct. Here they are, Montero twirled a few papers in his hands, but I found yours a bit more interesting than the others. Apparently, your old lady was more meticulous than the others, so the scammers had to process more documents with her. May I see the contract and receipt? Of course. Elena handed the papers to the investigator. Interesting, said Montero, studying the documents. But I must say, I expected more. What did you expect? The donation contract will include certain circumstances that nullify it. You simply stated in your statement that they assured you in a written form about all the details of the transaction. I mean, promises about the nursing home, care, and so. But such information cannot be included in such documents, which makes it invalid. But no, no. These guys made up everything correctly. And what about the receipt? Well, the receipt is interesting. With other victims, everything was handled through written assurances. But in your case, what was her name? The investigator looked at the statement. Matilda Delgado requested some written commitments. So, does this receipt have any legal weight? Unfortunately, no. A receipt is given when it comes to lending money, but here it's just a promise to transfer money, so any court would dismiss such a piece of paper. But in any case, it's something new. We have at least a sample of their handwriting and their employee's signature. So, if you don't mind, I'll scan this document. I don't mind, of course. But what should we do about my mother-in-law? 
I'm a straightforward person, so I won't hide anything. Prepare for the worst. Even if we find something to hold on to, it will take a lot of time. You also have two weeks until you have to leave? Yes. Well, with just two weeks, we won't be able to accomplish much. There's virtually no evidence. They do everything by the book. Have you checked this nursing home? Maybe they're poisoning the elderly there to avoid taking care of them? We have checked. Of course, it's not a five-star hotel, but everything is within the legal framework. The conditions there are minimal, so if you have another place for your old lady, it's better to take her there. But they promised her personal nurses, care, and nature. Isn't that defamation? Can't they be held accountable for that at least? Inaccurate information in advertising is an administrative offense, not a criminal one. And verbal communications. It will be difficult to prove anything, and it's not necessary. Our task is to elevate this case to a more serious crime, but with this information, unfortunately, it will take us a while to do so. So, you're suggesting that I just give them the apartment and leave silently? You've already given it to them. Not you, more precisely, but your mother-in-law, so consider yourself in someone else's apartment right now. I understand your feelings perfectly, but you also need to understand me. I'm being as honest as possible with you and telling it like it is. I'll do everything within my power, but I can't promise anything, especially in the near future. Let's hope that they slip up somehow soon and we can catch them. All right. I understand everything. Thank you. Elena left the investigator's office. Hoping for quick assistance from the police made no sense. That meant she had to take action herself. She picked up her phone and started scrolling through her contacts. She didn't have any acquaintances in law enforcement or the legal profession. The only person who had some connection to the field of law was her mother-in-law's friend, Sonora Fuentes. Without much hesitation, Elena dialed her number. Sonora Fuentes, hello. This is Elena, the daughter-in-law of Matilda Delgado, your friend. Hello, Elena, my dear. I didn't recognize your voice right away, Sonora Fuentes replied amiably. You know, we've encountered a very unpleasant situation. About the apartment? Yes. I accidentally overheard your conversation with Sonora Delgado yesterday. Well, you were absolutely right in your concerns. What a foolish situation. This is an extremely common method of fraud. I've told Matilda about such cases many times. Why didn't she listen to me? Why? I don't understand what got into her either. Perhaps they somehow influenced her. They have special techniques. Something like hypnosis. They distract attention, gain trust, and that's it. They take advantage of our old lady's vulnerability. It seems so. I don't remember Sonora Delgado agreeing to anything quickly before. Well, I understand that you're not calling me just to share your worries. Yes, you're right. I just came out of the police station. They said the situation is very complicated and it's unlikely that anything will change in two weeks. And in two weeks, Sonora Delgado will have to move out. Of course, I won't send her to any nursing home. I'll bring her to live with me. But you understand what a blow all of this will be for her. I understand. Matilda has been giving up a lot lately, so yes, for her, there is no need to worry about such things. You know what? Come to my place right now. My son is home. He's a lawyer. Maybe we can come up with something together. Elena thanked Sonora Fuentes for the offer and hurried to her place. In general, she didn't meet with her mother-in-law's friend often. While her husband was alive, they only saw each other at social gatherings and after his death, a bit more frequently. Sonora Fuentes lived nearby and visited her friend once a week, but usually Elena wasn't home during those times. But even from those rare encounters, Elena had formed a very good impression of this woman. Sonora Fuentes was slightly younger than Sonora Delgado and had a completely different character. Sometimes Elena wondered, how could such two different women become friends? 
the stern, authoritative Sonora Delgado and the kind-hearted, straightforward Sonora Fuentes. Yet both of them were quite emotional and always ready to stand up for themselves and their rights. When Elena heard that Sonora Fuentes was willing to help, she felt relieved. Yes, she didn't have a plan, and waiting for one from an elderly woman, even a former lawyer, would be foolish. Nevertheless, Elena felt much calmer in her heart. She quickly drove to Sonora Fuentes' home, which was a few blocks away from Sonora Viktorovna's place. She rang the bell after reaching the third floor. The door was opened by a man in his 40s, wearing a knitted cardigan and a white shirt. Good day. I'm here to see Sonora Fuentes, Elena said a little shyly. Yes, yes, come in. We've been waiting for you. Elena entered the apartment. I'm Javier, Sonora Fuentes' son, a lawyer. Nice to meet you, Elena replied and walked into the room. It was furnished luxuriously by Soviet standards, a wall-to-wall -wall wardrobe, many sets of dishes, a huge crystal chandelier, and two wide leather armchairs. Sonora Fuentes was sitting in one of them. Have a seat, Elena, the woman gestured to the neighboring chair. Javier also entered the room and sat down on a nearby chair. Thank you for agreeing to see me, Elena politely said. Oh, don't be so formal. Sonora Fuentes replied playfully. Let's get down to business then. Do you still have the papers that Matilda signed, or did you hand everything over to the police? No, I only have copies. I have everything with me. Elena took out a folder from her bag and handed it to Sonora Fuentes, who, without even looking at its contents, passed it to Javier. Well, we have a professional sitting here. Let him figure it out, the elderly woman said sarcastically. Actually, I'm not a professional at all, Javier said, studying the documents. I'm a criminal lawyer, and I don't really understand much about these civil contracts. Well, it seems like everything is drafted correctly, at first glance. I'll take a photo of them and send them to a colleague. He specializes in these kinds of transactions. And what about the receipt? Please have a look at it, Elena requested. Same thing. I can't say anything. I can only send it for handwriting analysis, but I doubt it will be of much use to us, the lawyer replied. Here's what I've been thinking, Sonora Fuentes began. In reality, we have two options, civil and criminal. At first glance, we don't have any leads for the criminal path, although if the investigator was interested in this case, there must be a reason. In the civil aspect, we can demand the invalidation of this contract, declaring the transaction void. We can't, Javier interrupted his mother. I just received a response from my colleague. In general, we don't have any leads to pursue the civil route either. This scheme is known not just in our city. These scammers used to operate in the neighboring city as well. He writes that they've tried lawsuits and pretrial negotiations from every angle. It's all pointless. Somehow, they managed to make these poor old ladies sign all the documents and that's it. Well, that's even better, Sonora Fuentes said cheerfully. I'm sorry, but why is it better? Elena wondered. Because we're left with the opportunity of catching them on criminal charges. And if we successfully resolve the issue, not only will we be able to get back your mother-in-law's apartment, but we'll also be able to put this whole gang behind bars for a long time. It sounds tempting, of course, but you yourself said there are no leads. That's only at first glance, Sonora Fuentes remained undeterred. We need to find out in great detail how their operation works. I can't believe that someone like Matilda could have signed everything so calmly. That's right, she didn't just calmly sign everything. Even the investigator mentioned that these social workers usually get by without receipts, relying on verbal promises, Elena recalled. Still, the fact that they managed to appease her with just one receipt, which, by the way, has no legal power, is strange. But she didn't know that the receipt had no legal power, did she? Javier countered. My dear, you remember Sonora Delgado well, don't you? Whether this piece of paper has legal power or not, you can't just brush her off so easily. And that's true. 
the lawyer evidently remembered the character of his mother's friend. So, I think we need to expose them thoroughly, Sonora Fuentes concluded. How are we going to do that? Elena didn't understand. But you have me. Sonora Fuentes exclaimed. An elderly lonely woman, she glanced at Javier. Well, almost lonely. The perfect target for this gang. We need to somehow lure them to me. They'll come hunting for my apartment, and that's when we'll try to catch them on something. Mom, wait. Are you serious? I am, Javier, I am. If anything happens, you'll be there. But, Sonora Fuentes, Elena intervened, it's really dangerous. Maybe they won't harm you, but what if they actually use some kind of hypnosis and you end up giving them the apartment too? But you'll be there. You'll intervene if necessary. And I think Javier can organize everything for proper surveillance. Well, I don't even know, the lawyer hesitated. Do you have any better options? Sonora Fuentes asked. No, Javier shook his head. If it were another woman in your place, I would have been the first to suggest using her as bait. See, that settles it. I don't want to hear anything else. It's decided. Maybe we should involve the police in this case? Elena suggested. No, they won't help. Javier cut her off. They're so overwhelmed that they have no concern for our suspicions. Then how will we control the situation? What if we can't intervene in time? We'll install surveillance cameras in the apartment, the lawyer answered. Wow, do you have special equipment? No. Hidden cameras are only used in TV shows. We'll keep it simpler. An ordinary mobile phone will work as a hidden camera. We'll make a video call and place one phone, for example, among the china set, so only the camera is visible, and we'll observe and listen from the other phone. Simple, legal, and effective. That's incredible. Elena was amazed by the simplicity of Javier's idea. What did you expect? Sonora Fuentes asked. These lawyers are under strict surveillance nowadays. You can't make a single wrong move. But still, Elena was worried about her mother-in-law's friend. Maybe I should at least call the investigator. He seems like a competent person. Don't, Elena, Javier firmly said. You see, they have everything according to their instructions, surveillance, warrants. They'll ruin our whole operation and most likely send us far away. Elena let out a heavy sigh. She had always lived by the rules and had never engaged in such self-initiated activities. Neither she nor anyone in her circle had ever had any problems with fraudsters or the police, so she felt like she was in a TV show. Only this time, she had to play one of the leading roles against her will. Just a moment, how do we lure them to you? Sonora Fuentes asked. Here, in the contract, there's an address and a phone number, Elena pointed to one of the papers. Maybe you can call, say that you heard about them from your neighbor, and as a lonely woman, you are in great need of their care. Great idea, Elena. Javier, give me that paper. Sonora Fuentes took out her mobile phone, dialed the number, and waited for a connection. It's not available. That's strange. Maybe they don't work on Saturdays? Elena suggested. Unlikely. Every client is worth their weight in gold to them. Such companies should be available for calls around the clock. Something else is going on. Maybe I scared them off? Elena remembered her visit to young old age yesterday. When I was there yesterday, I threatened to report them to the police. Perhaps they got scared and decided to leave the city. That's a possibility, Sonora Fuentes pondered. What if they didn't have time to gather their things within a day? Javier joined the conversation. Maybe they disconnected the phone, but haven't left the office yet. They wouldn't want to lose a client who would come to them willingly. What do you mean? Elena asked. I mean we should go to them right away. Sonora Fuentes didn't give her son a chance to reply. The three of them quickly gathered and got into Javier's car. Within 15 minutes, they arrived at their destination. There she is, look. 
Elena pointed to a woman with a bag coming out of the office building. I spoke to her yesterday. Well, then, watch closely. I'll give you a master class, Sonora Fuentes said as she prepared to get out of the car. Mom, wait. Javier stopped his mother and reached into the glove compartment. He took out a phone and called it from his own phone. Put it in your pocket, just in case. We'll be listening to you. Sonora Fuentes tipped the phone and got out of the car. Looking around, she headed towards the woman who had walked in the opposite direction from the office building. Yes, Sonora Fuentes was energetic beyond her years. At 69, she could outshine the youth not only physically but also psychologically. Not many people would agree to embark on such an adventure, and it was unclear what motivated her more, the desire to help her friend in trouble or the curiosity to participate in a risky endeavor. Sonora Fuentes caught up with the woman briskly, took a moment to catch her breath, and called out to her. Excuse me, please. What's the matter? The woman turned around. I feel so embarrassed to ask, but Sonora Fuentes spoke in a plaintive voice. I think I'm lost. I left home wanting to go to the management company. I guess I'm just getting old. Do you have your phone with you? Have you called any relatives? Having a phone is one thing, but what good is it? I have no relatives left. They've all dispersed, leaving me alone. Well, the woman pondered, what should I do with you? Do you at least remember your address? I remember the street, but the house, not so much. How can it happen? Let me drive you to the street. Maybe you'll recognize the area when we get there. Oh, my dear, you're my savior. Thank you. Just hold your thanks. I haven't done anything yet. Which street is it? San Nicolas. We'll get there quickly. The woman took Sonora Fuentes by the arm. Let's go. My car is parked not far from here. Elena and Javier observed everything from their car. What should we do? Elena worried. Let's follow them carefully. Javier shifted gears and drove off cautiously. The woman led Sonora Fuentes to the car, got behind the wheel, and headed toward San Nicolas Street, where both Elena's mother-in-law and her friend lived. Do you think she took the bait? Elena asked. It seems so. Javier followed the scammer's car while maintaining a distance. This lady doesn't seem very compassionate. She wouldn't help just like that. She smelled an opportunity. Ten minutes passed, and the phone remained silent. Elena and Javier started to worry a little. Perhaps the connection was lost? But as they turned onto San Nicolas Street, the woman asked Sonora Fuentes, Well, do you recognize the neighborhood? I do, my dear, I do. Let me go on by myself. No, let me drive you right to the entrance. Sonora Fuentes began giving directions to the woman on how to reach her home. Within a couple of minutes, the car arrived at its destination. Elena and Javier parked in the neighboring yard. Now I won't let you go so easily, Sonora Fuentes said with concern. Come in, I'll make you some coffee. I would love to. The woman said, clearly understanding that she had found her last victim in this city. They slowly made their way up to the apartment. Sonora Fuentes pretended to be a frail old woman, so she tried to move as slowly as possible. In the apartment, she seated the woman in a chair, transferred the phone from her jacket to her pants pocket so that Elena and Javier could hear everything, and went to the kitchen to brew some coffee. So, you were saying... No one from your relatives takes care of you? The woman asked. They've all dispersed. They have nothing to do with me, Sonora Fuentes fabricated a story on the spot. I never asked for anything, always did everything myself, shopping, going to the clinic, collecting money. But in the past few months, I've been feeling really bad. My legs sometimes give out, and now my head too. What's your name, dear? Irene. I think you're very lucky to have met me today. Yes, you've helped me a lot. I don't know how to thank you. And not just for that. Soon you'll want to thank me even more. 
Sonora Fuentes feigned confusion on her face. The scammer, Irene, continued. You see, I work for a social organization. We provide assistance to lonely elderly people, ensuring them a dignified old age. You're such a good girl. How do you do it? It's simple. We offer you a place in a wonderful nursing home by the river with a view of the forest, nice renovations, caring staff, and most importantly, you won't have to make any monthly payments. You'll have a personal nurse, constant support, and medical examinations. Basically, everything you want. You describe it so beautifully. But I have no savings. Everything goes towards medication. You won't need to pay anything, I'm telling you. But, but you must have some benefit from this. I'll be honest, there will be benefits, of course. Firstly, such organizations receive support from the government. There are certain benefits for charitable activities. And secondly, tell me, what do you plan to do with your apartment? I don't have any plans. I'll wait for my death, and it will pass on to someone among my children and grandchildren. Someone among those very children who left you here alone, who don't visit you and don't help you in any way. Well, they're still my children. It's customary, the old die and leave their property to their children, no matter what they're like. You're such a kind-hearted person, Grandma, but I have a better idea. Our organization will help you sell this apartment at a good price, and you can do whatever you want with the proceeds. You can give some to your children, save some, go on a trip, or spend it on treatment abroad. If anything, we'll help you organize it all. Our residents receive medical treatment in Israel, Germany, and all over the world. Oh, that would be simply wonderful. Of course, at my age, I'm not up for traveling, but at least I can help my children. They say there's a crisis on TV right now. I've even considered selling this apartment myself. Why does an elderly woman need so many rooms? But I got scared of dealing with those. What are they called? Realtors, right. And here, if you handle everything yourselves. Of course, we'll handle everything. And I'll be honest with you, this is where our second benefit comes in. We will allocate a percentage of the sale to our social organization. This money will be used exclusively to help other lonely elderly people. Well, at the end of life, I can do a good deed. Oh no, what are you talking about? It's not the end. Consider that everything is just beginning for you. You managed to make me happy, my dear. So what do I need to do for this? Do I need to sign some documents, come to you? You don't have to go anywhere. Our representative will come to you today, explain everything in detail, prepare the necessary paperwork, and show you what needs to be signed. All you need to do is prepare your passport. We will take care of the rest. I'm so happy for you. You're extremely lucky today. When will they come? Right away? No. Will you be home from 5 to 6? Where should I go? I'll definitely be home. All right. At that time, a young man from our organization will come to you. The woman said goodbye to Sonora Fuentes and left. Javier and Elena waited for her to leave the entrance, then got out of the car. They had three hours left to prepare for the operation. They went up to Sonora Fuentes' apartment. Mom, you're incredible. Javier admired Sonora Fuentes' acting skills. It's all about skill, you know, the elderly woman modestly replied. Listen, this is all great, but do we have a specific plan of action? Elena asked. We'll work on that now. Javier walked around the room, examining every corner. I think we'll install the camera here. He pointed to the central compartment of the long cabinet on which a crystal set was displayed. I happen to have a white phone case. I don't think it will be visible. Then we'll need to move the armchair a bit as well. With a light movement, Javier positioned the armchair at a slight angle, then approached a small coffee table and placed it precisely in the center between the armchairs. Now the camera will capture both the table and the armchair. 
Mom, Javier turned to Sonora Fuentes. We need to make sure that all the paperwork is dealt with specifically at this table. And overall, try not to leave the camera's field of view. Got it. Tell me, will you be using real documents? What if they manage to process something? Elena expressed her concern. Do I have a choice? I haven't made any other passports for myself, and preparing fake copies is risky, you know. I think in our line of work, credibility is crucial. They shouldn't even have the slightest suspicion that something is wrong. And don't worry about me. I will definitely read the document before signing it. All right. Let's suppose everything goes as planned. Elena decided to construct a possible scenario. He will come in, start telling you about their services. You will pretend to be very interested, impressed. Then he will take out the contract and ask you to sign. What happens next? Not so fast, Elena. After that, I will start tormenting him with various questions. Are they scammers? At what price they will sell the apartment? Will they show any other documents? Javier joined the conversation and came up with a question for his mother. Then we can shift to personal matters, start asking him personal questions about his wife, his children. Transition to discussing recent news. Basically, Elena, the task for my mom will be to annoy him, you know? When a person is irritated, they have less self-control and can make mistakes. Exactly. Sonora Fuentes agreed with her son. And the culmination of this spectacle will be the signing of the contract. He will take out his paper, and I, the annoying old lady, will transform into an experienced lawyer. I will directly ask him, why does it say here that it's a gift contract and not a sale contract? He will start coming up with various excuses. That's where we'll catch him because everything will be recorded on camera. Very interesting. Elena attentively listened to the plan. But how will you avoid signing the contract? You won't actually sign it, right? Of course, I won't. I will pretend to feel unwell with my heart and ask them to call an ambulance. I think at that moment he will get scared and run away. He doesn't need any extra witnesses. And he wouldn't want to explain to the doctors who he is and how it all happened. But that's not the entire plan. Let's say, miraculously, he forces me to sign that document. There will be two coffee cups on the table, as the gracious hostess must offer drinks to her esteemed guest. After signing, with a clumsy movement, I'll spill the coffee on the paper, and with a slight hand movement, the contract will turn into a crumpled rag. Well, in the end, you'll come up with something and won't let him leave the building with the contract. Just don't overdo it. So, Elena, are you calm now? Yes, it's impressive. Well, great. Sonora Fuentes said cheerfully. Then you and Javier will need to get in the car by 5 o'clock and watch from there near the entrance. I'll probably run to my mother-in-law during that time, as she has been alone there since morning. Go ahead. Just make sure you understand that it's better not to tell her anything, okay? Sonora Fuentes clarified. Of course, I understand everything, Elena replied and headed towards the exit. Leaving the entrance, she made her way to Sonora Delgado's house. Elena was filled with conflicting emotions. On one hand, it was very important and interesting for her to see the plan through for the sake of her mother-in-law, but on the other hand, she was very worried about Sonora Fuentes. At first glance, this elderly woman seemed extremely self-assured, someone who wasn't afraid to confront scammers. However, Sonora Fuentes was not young at all. Too many things could go wrong in this plan. Ten minutes later, Elena arrived at her destination. The television was playing in the room again, and the daughter-in-law realized that her mother-in-law had slightly recovered from yesterday. Sonora Delgado, how are you feeling? Elena asked with concern. I'm fine, Elena. Why are you asking? Well, it seemed to me that you were very upset about yesterday. Elena was surprised by her mother-in-law's question. You know, I don't remember yesterday very well, Sonora Delgado spoke calmly. How can you not remember? What about the apartment deal? No, I remember that. I'll be living in the retirement home soon, Elena. 
You will finally be free from me. It can't be. Elena didn't immediately understand what was happening. Her mother-in-law had never experienced memory lapses like this, even after her stroke. Are you not feeling dizzy? Is your coordination fine? I'm telling you, everything is fine with me. Elena went to the kitchen, closed the door tightly, and dialed her mother-in-law's friend's number. Hello, Sonora Fuentes, something is wrong with Sonora Delgado. She hardly remembers yesterday, just fragments. She's now happy that she secured a place in the retirement home. Well, I suspected that, exclaimed Sonora Fuentes. Matilda couldn't just give in so easily. They must have drugged her, but that makes it more interesting. How is she feeling overall? Seems like everything else is fine. Well, that means she won't die. Don't worry, Elena, everything will work out. Sonora Fuentes hung up. Elena became even more worried. Now the danger to the elderly woman's health was not just hypothetical but very real. Elena couldn't simply leave this situation as it was and, after some thought, dialed Investigator Montero's number. Captain, good evening. It's Elena Gasset. We met this morning, remember? Yes, have you remembered something? The captain recognized Elena right away. No. Something new came up. Well, my mother-in-law started having memory lapses. I've never seen that before. I think they drugged her yesterday. Interesting. Send her for a blood test at the clinic. I'll arrange for it to be done quickly. But that's not all. The thing is, my mother-in-law's friend and I decided to. How should I put it? Enhance the evidence. And today, someone from the same organization will come to her to sign a contract, and the whole process will be captured on camera. Of course, this woman won't sign any contracts. Have you lost your mind? Montero interrupted Elena. What kind of self-initiative is this? Playing detectives, are we? But Captain, we didn't have a choice. Time is running out. They'll take the apartment soon. And because of that, you are putting another person's life in danger? The Captain paused for a moment. All right, what time is this event of yours? The representative from that organization is supposed to come between 5 and 6 o'clock. Damn. That soon. I'm currently in another city. I won't be able to make it by five. I'll try to be there by six. What's the address? San Nicholas Street, House 35, Apartment 12. Noted, wait for me. Be careful. All right, maybe you'll send someone else to us. No, that's impossible. On what grounds? Anyway, try to prolong the process as much as possible. After that conversation, Elena felt a little more relieved. Now Sonora Fuentes would have some form of security in the person of Investigator Montero. Elena looked at the time the clock showed 3 p.m. She decided that it was necessary to take Sonora Delgado for an examination. If the test results showed the presence of any substances in her blood, it would be solid grounds for police intervention. Without much hesitation, Elena called a taxi and entered the room. Sonora Delgado, do you remember when the local doctor once told us about a special blood test for comprehensive diagnosis of anemia? Elena decided to latch onto the recent words of the visiting medic to her mother-in-law. Of course, I remember. It's still quite expensive. I hope you're not suggesting I should do it. Yes, that's exactly what I'm suggesting but you don't have to pay a huge sum for it. There's a current promotion. It's free for elderly people. Until when is the promotion? Until today. And why didn't you say anything all this time? Get ready. We'll go. Elena knew that Sonora Delgado wouldn't miss the opportunity to get the test done for free, even though she didn't really need it. Five minutes later, the taxi arrived, and Elena and her mother-in-law headed to the Pala Clinic. There were almost no traffic jams on the weekend, and within 15 minutes, the car arrived at the destination. Elena escorted Sonora Delgado to the Pala Clinic, seated her on a chair in the corridor, and approached the registration window herself. 
Speaking quietly so that her mother-in-law wouldn't hear anything, she asked. Hello. Where should I go for a blood test? Which one? The woman asked sternly. How do I put it? Elena couldn't come up with the right wording. It's for testing different substances. What? The woman didn't immediately understand what Elena wanted from her. Oh, are you from the investigator's office? You should have said so right away. We were informed. Go straight down the corridor to room 14. Elena and Sonora Delgado reached the laboratory. Listen, why isn't there a cue for such an unprecedentedly generous attraction? Her mother-in-law wondered. Well, it's Saturday today, the last day, and elderly people don't work. So they all came on weekdays and got it done. Elena found this excuse convincing. To her relief, the medical worker who took the sample was silent, and surprisingly, Sonora Delgado didn't ask any unnecessary questions. After a quick analysis, they stepped out into the corridor to wait for the results. Just 10 minutes later, the healthcare worker came out and silently handed Elena a piece of paper. Well, what does it say? Sonora Delgado asked. I can't see anything without my glasses. Well, Elena scanned the unfamiliar numbers with her eyes. Everything seems to be normal. Finally, she reached the last line, where it was written in bold letters, not detected. Yes, everything is perfectly fine. Let's go. I'll call a taxi now. Elena didn't even know whether to be happy or not. It seemed that now she didn't need to worry about the health of her mother-in-law or Sonora Fuentes. It was unclear what to catch these scammers on. What could she show Investigator Montero? It all depended on today's operation, which was less than 1.5 hours away. The taxi quickly arrived at Sonora Delgado's home, and Elena accompanied her into the apartment. I'll call Liza now and brag to her, Sonora Delgado proudly said as she entered the room. Maybe it's better not to? Elena didn't have a chance to warn Sonora Fuentes about the examination, and her mother-in-law's call could cause some misunderstanding. She simply won't have time since today is the last day. Yes, you're right. I should have called earlier. Why do they inform about their promotions so late? Elena didn't answer that question, but only informed Sonora Delgado that she would have to go again in the evening. Why are you running around so much? You used to stay home on weekends, and now you're running back and forth, her mother-in-law asked skeptically. Well, my friend came from the capital. We studied together at the institute, so I'm showing her our city. Oh, after the capital, our city will be very interesting for her, of course, Sonora Delgado commented sarcastically. All right, go in peace. Don't worry about me. I'll cook dinner for myself. Elena was glad that her mother-in-law was in a good mood. After waiting for another half an hour, she gathered her things and headed to Sonora Fuentes' house. She and Javier had agreed to meet a little before 5 o'clock. When Elena arrived at the house, she saw that Javier was already sitting in the car. He looked very tense. No wonder. Soon his mother was supposed to let the scammers into her apartment. Elena opened the car door and sat in the front seat. Well, how is Sonora Delgado? Mom told me that you called her, Javier asked anxiously. Everything is fine. I took her for examination and they didn't find anything. Javier let out a sigh of relief. They sat in silence for a couple of minutes until Elena decided to inform the lawyer. I did call the investigator after all. He said he might be able to come by six. What? But I asked you not to, Elena. This could disrupt the whole operation. What was I supposed to do? Maybe Sonora Delgado's life was in danger. I had to call to arrange the examination. I didn't know back then that they wouldn't find anything. And I also informed him about Sonora Fuentes. All right. Maybe you're right. Javier leaned on the steering wheel and fell into thought. It was already five o'clock on the clock. Elena looked at the phone, which was mounted on the car's dashboard. It displayed a panorama of Sonora Fuentes' living room. 
The woman sat calmly in her armchair, flipping through a newspaper. Javier kept a close eye on the entrance to the building. Ten minutes passed, but no one resembling a representative from the social organization entered. After waiting for another five minutes, Elena decided to break the tense silence. Javier, tell me. I don't know why I even wanted to ask this question. Maybe it's important to me. Were you acquainted with my husband, Luis? Elena wanted to break the awkward pause and came up with nothing better than to talk to Javier about her husband who passed away a year ago. She knew almost nothing about his friends. She only saw some of his colleagues at work, and that was it. Of course. We were childhood friends. Our parents lived in neighboring yards, and our mothers still live there. What happened later? Why did you stop communicating? We grew up, became all big and serious. Everyone is busy with work, family. There was no time left for friendship. Well, I guess that's how it happens with many people. Then I flew to work in America, and I only returned here occasionally. I didn't really maintain contact with anyone here except my mom. I didn't find out about Luis's passing right away. My mom called me only two days later, so I didn't even have time to attend the funeral. And how about you now? Will you be leaving again soon? No, the law firm where I worked there went bankrupt, so I decided to come back here. I've been running my own private practice here for the past six months. I thought I would be bored after America, but as you can see, Javier smirked, I don't have time to be bored. The pay is lower, but the cost of living is cheaper here, of course. Yes, you won't get bored with us. By the way, my mom sometimes told me about you, Javier said with interest. What are you saying? About me? Elena also perked up. Yes, about you. She said, it's amazing that the daughter-in-law not only didn't left her mother-in-law, but also started living with her and taking care of her. Besides, I remember Sonora Delgado's strong character since childhood. Oh, she's all alone. I couldn't have done otherwise. And you're right about her character, of course. It's not easy sometimes. But she did so much for Luis and me in her time that I will be grateful to her for the rest of my life, so I try not to pay attention to her sharp remarks and simply do my duty. You have a heart of gold. I can't imagine my ex-wife helping my mom if something happened to me. You know, even when Luis was alive, I couldn't have imagined living with Sonora Delgado either, Elena smiled. But then, as you can see, it worked out. So you're wrong to speak ill of your wife. Former. No, everything was clear from the very beginning, Javier smiled too. He wanted to continue, but apparently thought that discussing his ex-wife with Elena would be tactless. You can't determine in advance how a person will behave in a difficult situation. If someone had told each of us three days ago what we would be doing now, no one would have believed it. But look at how life has turned out. I would have never believed that I would be trying to catch criminals. And neither would I. We, lawyers, usually see things from a slightly different perspective. Our job is not to catch criminals, but to defend those accused of crimes. The only person I would never doubt is Sonora Fuentes. She will come to help anyone, anytime. Yes, my mom is amazing. She's full of energy. I do worry about her youthful enthusiasm, but that's what keeps her going. I think without adventures, she would lose interest in life. You probably take after her. Being a criminal defense lawyer is also not without its adventures. Maybe to some extent, but I'm a much calmer person in life. I take after my dad more, I guess. My mom didn't immediately accept my choice to become a lawyer. She kept saying how I would defend all sorts of criminals. And what did you tell her? I told her what any professional lawyer would say, we defend justice, not criminals. A person can be unjustly accused of something they didn't do. That's when we come to their aid. But very often, criminals are caught at the scene of the crime. Do you still fight for those cases? For example, would you defend the employees of that company who took away Sonora Delgado's apartment? You're asking very difficult questions, Elena. I'm sorry if I said something unnecessary. 
No, it's fine. I can't answer that question directly. Of course, I won't defend those scoundrels. The thing is, I have a personal interest here because these people deceived my deceased friend's mother and now they plan to deceive my own mother. And when there's a personal interest involved, it's against our legal ethics to handle such a case. Elena leaned back against the seat and pondered, but not about legal ethics. She was thinking about Javier. She liked his way of answering questions, his calmness and thoughtfulness. She found something in common between Javier and her late husband Luis, and for a few seconds, it even seemed to Elena that she was starting to like him. But these thoughts were interrupted by Javier himself. Elena, look, he said, pointing toward the entrance. A young man in a suit with a leather shoulder bag was standing near the intercom. I think that's our guy. Maybe just a neighbor? Elena looked at the live feed from the apartment. Either way, we'll find out soon. A few seconds later, Javier and Elena heard the intercom ringing through their phones. Sonora Fuentes got up from her chair and went to the hallway. Hello. I represent a social organization that helps the lonely elder people. Our employee told us everything about you. The microphone of the phone, lying on the service tray, barely reached the corridor, but snippets of conversation could be heard. Sonora Fuentes didn't keep the scammer waiting at the door and immediately invited him into the room. I've been waiting for you here. I've been on edge for 20 minutes. The woman once again appeared as a frail, anxious old lady. Well, I apologize. I have a lot of things to do. I have to visit everyone, help out, the employee explained his delay in a polite tone. I understand, I understand. I suppose you have many people like me to attend to. Quite a few, but you can't fit everyone into the retirement home, as you can imagine. So you're very lucky. I don't even know why I'm so fortunate. Oh, right. I didn't even offer you coffee. I wouldn't say no to coffee. Sonora Fuentes went to the kitchen. Javier and Elena carefully watched the scammer. The unremarkable young man with glasses and neatly combed hair began to examine the apartment. At one point, he approached the cabinet, probably to assess the crystal set. Elena thought he would notice the phone with the camera on and everything would be ruined. But no. After looking at the crystal for about 10 seconds, the young man shifted his gaze to something else. And here I am. Sonora Fuentes entered the room with a tray holding a coffee pot and two cups. What a caring hostess you are. The man ingratiated himself. Well, why not take care of such an esteemed guest? What did you say your name was? I'm Alberto, the assistant to the manager. Why so modest? You're already a grown man and just an assistant. Sonora Fuentes began to implement her plan of psychological pressure on the scammer. Well, why not? I'm still a young person. That's what you think. Youth, you see, she paused. Before you know it, it's old age. So you need to work more. Well, I am working. The scammer's tone became less polite. Let's get down to business then. I need your passport. Here, I've prepared everything. Just as you asked, Elisaveta pointed to the table where the passport lay. Have a seat. All right, let's fill out the forms. The man sat in the armchair, took out some papers, and started flipping through the passport. Ah, so you're Sonora Fuentes. That's right. And what are you flipping through there, Albetro? Trying to check my marital status? Oh no, why would I need to know your marital status? Most likely, the man wanted to gather any information about the elderly woman's relatives. Then why were you flipping through it? Sonora Fuentes didn't let up on Alberto. I was looking for the registration. I needed the exact address. You could have just asked me. What's there to search for? Do you think I don't know my own address? Let me tell you. Sonora Fuentes began to professionally giving a runaround the scammer. The camera poorly captured Alberto's facial expression, but his gestures indicated that he was getting fed up with the situation. 
Sonora Fuentes, I beg you, don't confuse me. This is an important document, by the way. Well, let me have a look. The woman snatched the paper from Alberto's hands. Oh, a donation contract. So, am I giving you this apartment as a gift? Please, don't jump to conclusions. The man took the document back. It's necessary. Don't worry. So that you don't have to wait for the transaction to be completed and can move to the retirement home in two weeks. Oh, clever, very clever, but I heard on TV that a sale can now be registered within nine days. Maybe you should watch less TV. The man was very irritated. Why are you yelling at me? The old lady is elderly. She doesn't understand everything right away. I'm just filling out very important documents, you see? And here you are with your unnecessary comments. So, where are the documents for the apartment? Like, the registry or certificate? Irene told me that only the passport is needed. And how do you think we will process the apartment without documents for it? She probably just forgot to inform you. I don't even know where these documents might be. Elena was interrupted from her observation by a phone call. It was Investigator Montero. She answered the call with trembling fingers. Yes. Are you here already? Excellent. Do you see the red opal near the entrance? Yes, please get in it. Elena put away her phone and turned to Javier. The investigator will join us shortly. A couple of minutes later, the back door of the car opened and Montero got into the car. What's going on here? He asked angrily. We're monitoring the apartment, Elena pointed to the camera feed. Just wait. I think the interesting part is about to begin. Meanwhile, inside the apartment, the man was passionately explaining what the documents for the apartment looked like. After five minutes of explanations, Sonora Fuentes gave in. Oh, I remember now. They're in another room. Just wait, Alberto. I'll bring them to you. Sonora Fuentes got up and leisurely shuffled into another room. The man watched her, then took out a dark vial from his bag, opened it, and put it a few drops into the woman's cup. Javier and Elena didn't immediately realize that they needed to rush to save Sonora Fuentes, but the investigator reacted instantly. All right, let's go, quickly. All three of them got out of the car and ran to the entrance. Javier opened the entrance door with his key and then the apartment door. Everyone stay where you are, don't move. Montero shouted and swiftly knocked the scammer to the ground. Don't touch the cups and vial with your hands. The experts will arrive soon and investigate. The investigator handcuffed Alberto and reported the incident over the phone to the department. Mom, did you drink tea from this cup? Javier asked anxiously. No, of course not. I immediately figured out that this scoundrel wanted to take advantage of my absence. So it was a setup? The man lying on the floor hissed. Well, you won't prove anything anyway. How won't we prove it? Javier took out the phone from the service and stopped the recording. We will definitely prove it. Senior Montero, please include this recording as evidence in the case. We will. Montero took the phone for himself. Ten minutes later, the rapid response team arrived at the scene. They took the scammer to the department. An expert collected the cups and vial into his suitcase. The officers briefly questioned all the witnesses of the incident. They acted quickly, probably due to many calls today. After the group left, the investigators decided to stay in the apartment and conduct a detailed interrogation. Sonora Fuentes and Elena sat in chairs. Javier brought chairs from the kitchen for himself and the investigator, but Montero didn't sit down. He briefly reviewed the footage from the camera, then approached the window, thought for a moment, and turned to the seated people. Well, amateur detectives, allow me to ask you a few questions. The investigator carefully observed each person and focused on Javier. Was it your idea with the phone? Yes, Javier answered, lowering his gaze. He probably thought that the investigator would lecture him on the illegality of secret surveillance. Ingenious. 
Montero praised Javier. You know, for the first time in my career, I feel proud of the legal profession. With such compelling evidence, they won't be able to escape. Then he shifted his gaze to Sonora Fuentes. And you? How did you even decide to do this? Sitting without work is boring, Captain, Sonora Fuentes calmly replied. And I realized from the very beginning that they were using some substances. You're a very brave woman, Montero said in a serious tone, paused for a moment, and continued with bewilderment. The only thing I don't understand is why, if they use such crude methods, they weren't caught by our department or other cities. Dealing with apartments is one thing, but poisoning elderly people with unknown stuff is something else entirely. I think I know what it is, Elena said timidly. They didn't use such crude methods before. I don't understand. So why did they suddenly resort to poison in their last two scams? Montero asked. Well, first of all, it's not poison, but some kind of sedative that weakens attention and memory. And secondly, I think they had this vial with them on every deal just in case, as a plan B. It's just that they had come across quiet and naive old ladies before who were truly lonely and unhappy and were eager for any opportunity to secure a dignified old age and help their relatives. It was enough to talk to them and persuade them to give away the apartment so the scammers didn't need to add anything to the coffee. It all happened naturally. But then they encountered Sonora Delgado. She probably started bombarding them with questions and taunting them right from the doorstep. It's unclear how she even let them into the apartment. I think the scammers used a psychological trick in this case, the investigator interrupted Elena. It's unlikely that they immediately started talking about the apartment. They probably said something about charity, assistance, or a social state program. In other words, they played on her emotions. And when they were already inside the apartment, they got down to business. Well, perhaps, Elena agreed. So, they couldn't handle Sonora Delgado's strong personality for a long time. They first came up with that unfortunate receipt. Apparently, it didn't work. That's when the scammers remembered about their plan B and added something from the vial to suppress my mother-in-law's vigilance. Sonora Fuentes, with her acting talent, was able to recreate that situation, first pressuring the man with questions, provoking him. She managed to get him agitated, which made him resort to the method that had already been proven on Sonora Delgado. Bravo, Elena. The investigator nodded approvingly. Now everything makes sense. I started to suspect something when you told me that the receipt wasn't involved in these deals before. On one hand, I understood that it was the result of Sonora Delgado's persistence. But on the other hand, I didn't believe that her persistence could be dismissed with just a piece of paper, Elena pondered. But wait, if everything happened as I just described, then why didn't they find anything in Sonora Delgado's blood during the examination today? I think the results of analyzing the content of the vial will answer that question. Well, in my practice, there have been substances that are eliminated from the body within a few hours. Perhaps the scammers used something from that category. The investigator hadn't finished his sentence when a phone call interrupted him. What? How is that possible? Who interrogated him? I see. We'll think about it. Montero's face darkened. He sat down on a chair. This gifted one is refusing to cooperate. He doesn't want to turn anyone in. He claims he acted on his own discretion. He says he hasn't heard of any young old age. How could he not have heard of it? Sonora Fuentes exclaimed. Why is he saying that? He could face a much longer sentence. They told him that cooperation with the investigation would lead to a reduced punishment? Yes, they probably did, Montero replied. Our young investigator interrogated him. The higher-ups ordered an equal distribution of the workload, so they assigned him. I think these employees had a third plan for unforeseen circumstances feigning unconsciousness. There are two possibilities, either they were promised a large sum of money for it or they were threatened. I can't think of any other reason why a petty con artist would incriminate himself. What do we do now? 
We won't be able to hold the entire organization accountable, will we? Elena asked anxiously. We will, we definitely will, the investigator reassured her. From what I understood from your testimony, one of the organizers there is a woman named Irene, if that's her real name, of course. We need to apprehend her and confront her face to face with the con artist Alberto. And on what grounds will you detain her if this young man remains silent? Sonora Fuentes asked. Based on your statement, you had arranged a meeting with her, didn't you? That's already a reason. Of course, it may not be enough for the court at the moment, but I believe she will tell us everything after the first confrontation. Then we'll search everything thoroughly, and the case will be solid. The investigator looked at Elena. I'll ask you to bring your mother-in-law to the police station. Ideally, everyone should come, but it's crucial for Sonora Delgado to participate in the climax of the confrontation. If I remember correctly, the scammers came to her together? Yes, she told me about the young man and the woman. Perfect. So, I expect you at my office in about an hour and a half. But she hardly remembers anything. What should I tell her? The main thing is that she remembers they came together. The details are not as important. Just wait a moment. The investigator's phone rang again. He listened silently, said thank you, and hung up. Well, as I thought, they mixed a sedative into the tea, which is rapidly eliminated from the body. In most cases, it's harmless. The investigator recalled the interruption caused by the phone call. Oh, what should I tell my mother-in-law? Well, come up with something. You have a good imagination. It's time to get to work. First, we need to find this woman. The investigator left. Elena went home to her mother-in-law. She already had a rough idea of what she was going to say. Sonora Delgado, please don't worry. I have some rather unpleasant news for you, Elena began. You see, yesterday, scammers came to your apartment, but they have already been caught, so your apartment is safe. What are you talking about? How dreadful. I let those people into my home. There's no need to blame yourself, Sonora Delgado. Consider that it was thanks to you that they were apprehended. Elena wasn't lying. After all, who knows how many more lonely elderly people these fraudsters would have deceived if they hadn't encountered her mother-in-law. What do we do now? Nothing. Everything will remain the same. You just have to go to the police station for identification. Sonora Delgado was initially worried but then calmed down a bit. An hour later, Elena was getting ready to call a taxi when she received a call from Montero. Elena, the confrontation is canceled for today. We haven't been able to find the mastermind yet. The office is empty. Everything has been cleared out, not a single piece of paper left, so we'll have to wait. Elena informed Sonora Delgado that she didn't need to go anywhere today. Elena became worried again. What if the fraudster managed to escape? Will the transaction be annulled? The situation was heating up. First, that employee refused to testify, and now Irina had run away. Elena could only hope for the professionalism of law enforcement. The next day, Elena woke up to a call from the investigator. Everything is fine. We've apprehended her. She was stopped based on the description at the city exit. It's a good thing you recorded her license plate number. And has she been interrogated already? Yes, she also knows nothing, doesn't remember anything, and refuses to testify. So, bring your mother-in-law and come to the station right now. Twenty minutes later, Elena and Sonora Delgado were sitting near the investigator's office. The face-to-face -face confrontation had already begun, and snippets of it could be heard in the corridor. So, you claim that you don't know this person? And you say that you're seeing this woman for the first time? The investigator asked loudly. The scammers refused to answer anything. Montero tried for another five minutes to break the suspects, but without success. He then stepped into the corridor and called Sonora Delgado into his office. Sonora Delgado, please tell me, do you recognize these people? Yes, of course. They came to my place two days ago. 
They promised a decent old age. The faces of Alberto and Irene immediately changed. It was evident that they realized the collapse of all their plans. Thank you, Sonora Delgado. Please sign here. The investigator handed the paper and a pen to the elderly woman. That's it. Please wait in the corridor. Elena and Sonora Delgado sat down on the chairs near Montero's office again. For the first time in the past couple of days, Elena could breathe a sigh of relief. It was finally over. A few minutes later, two policemen entered the office and escorted the criminals out. Senorita Gasset, please come in, Montero's voice was heard. Elena entered the office. Sonora Delgado remained sitting in the corridor. Well, how did it go? Elena asked anxiously. They cracked. The investigator answered happily. Excellent. But I didn't understand why they came to Sonora Delgado together. They always operated together. The young man did all the dirty work, while the woman just sweet-talked and dulled the vigilance of the elderly. They were already planning to leave, probably to another city, but then your Sonora Fuentes crossed their path. Irene quickly sent Alberto to deal with her, while she herself covered their tracks. They caught the scammer, and Irene thought she was lucky that they didn't get caught together, but she was mistaken. What despicable people they are. Yes, but thanks to you and Sonora Delgado, we managed to catch them. With this evidence, they'll be put away for at least 10 years. Well, I'll prepare commendation letters for you, your mother-in-law, and the defense attorney. And what about Sonora Fuentes? I think something special should be done for Sonora Fuentes. I'll write a report to the authorities to recommend her for an award and a bonus. After all, she risked her health. Who knew what was in that little vial? So, we'll award her with the highest honors. Elena said goodbye to the investigator and walked out into the corridor. Together with Sonora Delgado, they returned home. The worst was behind them. As it turned out, these adventures had a positive effect on Elena's relationship with her mother-in-law. Sonora Delgado almost stopped putting pressure on her future daughter-in-law and began to interact with her just like a good friend. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.